Hello there, welcome back to Crafters TV. It's time for a masterclass. Oh, one of the most exciting shows on the schedule where we really take a deep, deep dive into a certain type of product or uh, a collection. Today it's all about stencils, stencils on their own to create fabulous things, stencils with dyes to create fabulous things. You see a theme, don't you, here? The theme is fabulous and be lots of fabulous things created over the next couple of hours uh not by me uh, of course talking of fabulous things i've just seen jake turn up and he's finally cut all his hair off there's something to have a little look at later um but uh, i am not on my own no she is back with me again lily is here how are you lily I'm very well, thank you. I'm very excited to be here on this lovely, I was going to say sunny Sunday. It's not. It's definitely not sunny, is it? horrible out there. It's I saw you walking weather. to work in the rain earlier. It's Did awful you? out there, isn't it? Yeah, mind you, it was worse first thing this morning. I went out for a run about seven o'clock. It was pouring it down. Perfect crafting weather. So sit back, relax and enjoy this masterclass. It's going to be a good one. Definitely. Time. Definitely perfect, uh, perfect weather. Should we get Jake in? Jake, do you want to come and show everyone your hair? Look, he's finally cut it all off. Come on, in you come. Here he comes. I know. Have you, have you seen already? Oh, yes, oh were well, you? Just yeah. if you haven't seen it, what number did you go for? Four. I think it looks great. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> you look quite <laughs> ominous. I'm a bit scared. Go on a few pop. Uh, <laughs> he was talking about shaving it off. We've gone from, we've had many incarnations of Jake's hair from uh, the mullet was a very strong look, wasn't it? And now we've gone to Skinhead Jake uh, as well. Lots of you are tuning in. It's definitely a great show to get involved in. I know lots of you love using stencils and there's so many great deals available for you in this particular show. We want to try and get to as many of those products as we can over the next couple of hours, but definitely worth heading over to the website as it always is, crafterscompanion.co.uk.com.eu. Hit that shop the show button and see some of the amazing things that are coming your way. Talking of amazing things coming your way, I want to start off with the Weekend Super Saver. We always try and bring you one of these every single weekend, whereby we're going to give you one of our most awesome products, but a brilliant deal, and that's exactly what you've got this weekend. So this week it's all about the acrylic paint markers that you're looking at uh, three color selections in here for you so you're going to get the brights and that gives you uh, the red the yellow the green and the blue you'll also receive the pastels and in the pastels uh, you get the rose the aqua the lime and the lilac and you also get the jewels as well and the jewels that's the pink the orange the purple and the violet as well as that you will also get this which is your 9 by 12 um, black paper pad it's really great quality from spectrum run it's the perfect medium uh, for you to be practicing with your acrylic markers creating a whole load of brilliant things great thing about the acrylic markers also is they go onto so many different surfaces like glass ceramic uh, of course mdf uh, wood pieces absolutely anything you wish they will go on to. There are some other deals that I want to tell you about as well that are still uh, hanging around from Cartload on Thursday. What an amazing Cartload it was. And there's a, a big one piece sale going on. Now, the great thing is this deal is absolutely off the chart because you're gonna buy this selection of dies and stamps and you'll get the midi for a penny. Let me show you what those dies and stamps are. So 
and stencils also. Something from our iris folding collection. You've got something from Enchanted Dreams. It's this wonderful stencil. You've got some connecting sentiments in here. Some wonderful stamps and dies that give you this lovely creator card. And one of our waterfall dies too. They are the perfect items to be using with your midi that you'll get for a penny. I know, for a penny. 69.99, 89.95 is what you should be paying for the midi. Today you get it for a penny when you go for it with these items, which is excellent. So don't miss out on that. 51.17, 63.04 if you are a Platinum member. Another one I wanna share with you as well is this one. Now it's the Nature's Garden one pig goodie bag. So you're buying these two items, a brilliant paper and cardstock from our Secret Garden range and a wax seal kit from Farmhouse. When you go for those you're going to get all of this other awesome stuff included for just a penny which is excellent so we've got some stamps and dies from Nature's Garden we've also got some stamps and dies from Farmhouse with that wonderful seed packet this gorgeous Nature's Garden secret garden the gate but that can be used across loads of other projects too we've got some beautiful stamps here from Farmhouse some wonderful garden gnomes in there those beautiful summery gnomes so you've got stamps and dies from that range you've got some of our Christmas gnomes uh, in in a stamp form, beautiful for colouring, and some stamps from Secret Gardens too. That's £70 or $84 worth of extra goodies for a penny, which is rather marvellous. Let's also share with you, oh, it's a perfect Christmas crafting time of year, isn't it? And we've got a brilliant one pig goodie bag for that as well. So with this one, what you're going to do is you're gonna go for these two items. It's your double-sided baubles and your ho-ho-ho stamps and dies. And that is then, going to give you the ability to get all of this other lovely stuff for a penny. So let me take you through that. You've got uh, one of our, our gift card uh, dies there. You've got some layering sentiment dies in there too. This one here, this is your layering stamps and dies. Absolutely beautiful. Then you've also got this creator card just here as well. Next up, you have got your 3D embossing folder with two separate stencils in there too, so you can overlay that, add lots of inky detail, and you've also got some wonderful layering stamps in there too. That's 86 pounds or 106 dollars worth of value for an extra penny there, which is excellent. And then up next, we have also got a Spectrum Noir 1P bag. You had a little look at this as well uh, in our earlier Colour Me Happy show. It's your botanical collection on the Aqua Blends. 24 awesome watercolour pencils in there for you and the glossy highlights. That's what you're paying for. And the value in what you're getting for a penny is really off the chart. Because it's like all the sort of best bits from our Spectrum Noir range. So you've got some of our tri-blend markers. You've got a brilliant discovery kit. And this, is, this on its own has got five classics, a fine liner, and a load of worksheets in there for you. The amazing acrylic paint pens, uh, these were as part of our weekend, but you can actually get them in here for a penny, which is amazing. You've also got some of our metallic acrylic paint markers. We're gonna include an ink pad for you. I know, literally all the best stuff. But then you've also got, hello, where are you off to? Uh, then you've also got some illustrators in here and we're going to give you some of our tri-colour aqua pens as well. So a brilliant, brilliant selection there. And a really good, I think if you don't own a lot of Spectrum Art at the moment, a really good um, selection of stuff from that range. So definitely go and check all of those out over on the website. There's loads of brilliant offers left over from th uh, Thursday's Cartload Show. Lots of you tuning in and saying hi. Uh, well, hoi hoi, in fact, uh, is what Thea's saying from the Netherlands. Mary's in Maine. Laura is in Arkansas. Sass. Uh, who else we've got? Just Crafty Chantel is saying hi for Detroit. Put your hands up. Uh, nee is here as well. She's saying hi to Jake and Joe and Lily and all the team. Val says, sun is shining, it's warm here. Hose pipe band starts on Friday, so could do with some of that rain. Still staying in crafting, looking for some of Lily's ideas. Yeah, a hose pipe band in Hampshire, Lily, already. Worlds apart from here, is No there? need Worlds for a hose pipe band up here, is there at We're the moment? Great. No. <laughs> um, Shaddy is saying, Hi from Canada, Roslyn's in Maryland as well, and Lorna Fernandez is saying hi from a, a sunny Western Supermare. Right, let's dive in and have a look at the first thing that we're going to be having a little look at. It is these that we're going to look at. It's your 3D templates that you're going to see here first. Now these make some really cool designs for you. They make really cool projects. They'll make a lot more sense as you see Lily take us through them, but you've got three different sets within here. So you've got the butterfly firstly, 
you also have the tulip within this one you've then got your bow card and the bow card is absolutely massive you actually got three different sets of stencils within the bow card there you've got a 20 percent saving uh you're looking at 23.97 or 30.95 if you want to get your hands on those ones 19.18 or 24.76 shaddy is saying wow jake i know he looks like his um new album's about to uh, <laughs> drop doesn't he he's definitely got a sort of a drake of the northeast vibe <laughs> going on uh today <laughs> uh gilbert says hi joe lily and crafty peeps uh, i love your shirt joe the pub's blue ribbon look like robots from afar loving the 50s style of jake's hair i don't know 50s style of jake's hair i'm not sure how he'll take to that gilmore but um <laughs> yes he's looking looking fabulous isn't he uh, any questions you've got, get them into me. Crafters TV on Facebook, Crafters Companion over on YouTube. But I know, Lily, you've got loads to get through, haven't you? So where would you like to start? Yeah. I'm going to just slightly wet your appetite a little bit with these 3D templates. Joe's obviously taking you through the templates that you'll actually be getting within the collection. But I just wanted to show you, before we get into demo, some of the sorts of things you could be making. So that's your fabulous Gorgeous. butterfly box. How special is that? Looks absolutely incredible. Then look at this tulip box absolutely gorgeous just changing up the colors so we're going with some lovely sort of sunset warm colors and it is actually a box that does open like so but bringing in all your different glitters your dew drops some of your um glossy highlights perhaps you're getting that bundle with the um aqua blend pencils you can get your glossy highlights in on the action on these boxes how stunning does that look but then the one that we're actually going to demo first we're going to do a variation um, That's a on this particular massive project that isn't one, isn't it amazing it might look quite overwhelming to start with you might think goodness me where on earth do i start but once you've got the templates it is actually really easy to put together it's just just about enjoying that process of building up all your different layers, decorating it however you like, and you get a stunning finished creation. So like I say, we're going to start with the um, lovely 3D bow card. Now, with all of your um, templates within this collection, you get so, so much included. You get all the templates, but you also get your instructions as well. So this, oh, mine is stuck together. Never, never ideal. Um, but yours won't be stuck together, don't you worry about that one. And it takes you through step by step exactly how to put all these different 3D objects together. Obviously, this one is our 3D bow card. But what you'll notice is every single sort of um, piece on there has got a letter on it. And as we come through to our actual templates and they're a lovely quality mylar template you'll see that we've got the letters on the template pieces as well so it's really really easy to sort of match up the instructions with your actual templates so so simple to follow but a really enjoyable process to actually go through and build these cards so what we do um, with all of our templates within the collection, they're made out of mylar, so they're beautiful quality, really easy to use, so obviously reusable. If you do get any pen or pencil on them, they do just wipe clean. We've got all the letters on there already, but for some of the other templates within the collection, it's not particularly relevant for this one. If you need to cut, for example, two of a particular piece, they'll give you two of that template. So oh, that's really always handy, isn't it? So, so easy to follow. It really is foolproof. Um, but for this particular one, it's just one of each piece as the templates will tell us. So first of all, we're going to start with the actual base part, the actual card itself. So all we need to do is we take our template G and then we're going to take our piece of cardstock and all you're going to do is you're going to take a really nice sharp pencil and you're just going to draw around all the way around the edge of your template. That line in the middle is a score line. So what you're going to do is you're going to draw all around the edge and I'll show you drawing around um, a little bit of a later stage but draw around, cut it out, nice big pair of scissors with it being straight lines, and then that line there is just where you're gonna pop a score line in with your scoreboard. So we do one of those for G. The other piece we do slightly differently. So instead of including the tab on the other piece, we actually cut off the tab so we get one full hexagon piece oh, like so. So you've got one with a tab and one without. And basically this is just gonna create our card base. So all we need to do, and of course you could be using this completely independently um, of the bow. This could just be a lovely shaped card that you're using with any of your um, different things that you've got in your crafty stash. But to stick them together, just a little bit of tape runner or red liner tape, whatever you find easiest, just along that top tab. And then we're, all we're gonna do is we're gonna line the two pieces up. So lining them up top and bottom, side to side, and I'm just finding out which is the best way for this to go. It is just about symmetrical. Um, so we're just gonna line that up, make sure the bottom of the two pieces are flush with each other, and then we're just gonna seal down 
that tab like so and all that's done is created really easily our own shape card. So we've got a lovely hexagon shape card um, out of this black cardstock that we're going to be popping our bow onto. So now we're going to move on to the actual 3D bow part itself and within your um, instructions it's going to tell you exactly how many of each you need to cut. So if we start with our um, back pieces, I've done them from black, so you sort of have pairs for each. So you've got A and B and then they go together, C and D go together and E and F go together. So basically you've got a top piece and a matten layer. So all you do is you draw around each one once and cut it out. So I've got my three in black, so I've got A, I've got C on that one and then I've got E there, so that's my three in black. And then I've got my other three and I've used some 12 by 12 cardstock from the Nature's Garden Sunflower Collection. But I'll just show you how easy it is to actually work with our templates. So I'm going to take out piece E. So all I need to do is just have a little look in my packet and everything comes in there. Um, so it's really easy to store. You can just keep it um, in your little, um, I don't know what you call it, not a bag, little wallet if you like. Um, so you can see with these two pieces get them in pairs so your larger one F is sort of your matten layer and then your slightly smaller one in this case E is your top layer so I've done the bottom layer for each in our black cardstock and then our top layer I've done in our pattern cardstock but when we come to draw around these you can hold them in position with something like um, some stick and spray on the back if you prefer um, but I just tend to pop it into position then just anchor it down, hand firmly in the middle of that template, and then just go around nice and slowly. They just feel like quite nice quality, these as well, quite robust, mm. aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've sort of had download templates in the past that you print onto cardstock, and they're, you know, they're, they're not really reusable. You use them once or twice, they get a bit dog-eared, and then you sort of have to print some more again. Mm. But with these, with them being mylar, they're really, really nice, strong and sturdy. I've had mine for, well, since they launched a few months back now, um, and they're still all in perfect condition. Like I say, if you do get a little bit of pen um, on the packet, not to worry, they do just wipe clean. So when we've drawn around the edges, and of course, always do use a nice sharp pencil, just to make sure you get all of that detail um, around your template. Just take, for this particular one, with it being like straight edges, like we can see here, take a nice big pair of scissors, and then just chop all the way around the outside. So they are all quite um, nice, easy, um, straight lines, nice big pieces um, to cut out. Not a lot of detail in there. Um, and I guess templates, uh, Lily, something we're all used to working with. Maybe not so much these days, you know, something that maybe you used to use more of uh, a little while ago. And whilst, you know, having dyes are brilliant, can you imagine the cost uh, if we'd have bought this to you as a dye collection? It would be you know, you would look at hundreds and hundreds of pounds or dollars, wouldn't you? So sometimes a really great cost-effective way to own something that maybe would have been out of reach as a die. Absolutely. I mean, looking at that price, it's, you know, it's not much more than £20. You wouldn't mm. get half of one of these sets as a die for yeah. that price. No, you absolutely just wouldn't, not. You get nowhere near. You'd be looking at hundreds of pounds for this collection of three. And let's be honest that it then becomes a little bit not as achievable. I think, yeah, because really, actually, do you know what? It's a really nice price point. They're available individually, 9 99 or 12 95 When you look at that as a cost per project, when you look at doing it as a project, absolutely brilliant value for money. I think it gets to a point, doesn't it, with dyes, where you think, you know, is it is it too much money for, for the project you're doing? But this is such a cost-effective way of doing it. Absolutely, but you still get brilliant results every single time. And also, I guess what we also need to remember is, especially people that are getting into craft, maybe not everyone has a die-cutting machine. No, absolutely not. And if you want to craft, um, perhaps, with children these are really easy to work with like I say they are big pieces and um, so there's not a lot of fiddly detail in there and um, so they are really simple to work with so what we're going to do now is we're going to sort of bring our pairs together and all this is really is a little bit of matting and layering so I tend to um, just use my tacky glue or my old purpose for this obviously with it being construction we want a nice strong adhesive um, we don't particularly need red liner tape for this this particular part of the project with it being, like I say, really matting and layering um, our smaller pattern pieces onto um, our black cardstock. But something like your Colal Tacky Glue is perfect because it gives you that little bit of wiggle room just to manoeuvre them into position um, so you get them lined up with those even borders. So what you might notice on our black pieces, 
but not on our corresponding um, pattern pieces. The instructions ask you to cut these little slits in there and those are actually part of the template. Right. So just using a craft knife, we cut those on the black pieces, but we don't cut them on the um, pattern top layers. What we found is easier to do if you cut them on your base layer, so in your black piece in this particular instance for what we're creating, and then you glue your matten layer to your bottom piece, then what you can do is you can go from the reverse and actually pop those um, cut lines all the way through that top layer and it just makes it a lot easier. If we were to um, put the cut lines in both layers, it'd be quite difficult to get them to line up perfectly so that the layer um, over the top lined up exactly with those cut layers in the layer underneath. So it just makes it a little bit easier. So what I tend to do is I'll stick all my layers together, just leave it a couple of minutes to dry and then I'll take my craft knife, knife, as we'll see in a moment, and I'll just pop those um, little cut lines back in. And those are sort of the tabs, the little slots that we slide um, the bow through to actually pop it together. So if we pop this one onto here, and I've chosen papers which are really similar in colour tone. Like I say, they are from our fabulous Nature's Garden Sunflower 12x12 pad but I've gone for slightly different for each of the three layers, just to give us that little bit of variation onto um, our project. So if we bring back in this, our tails doesn't have any slits to cut in, so we're just gonna leave that to one side. Then if we bring in this piece, we can see from the reverse, we've got our slits on that black layer. So all we're gonna have to do is just take a craft knife, and of course do take care when you are working with a craft knife, do just make sure you uh, keep your hands out of the way. I feel like I've got a bit of a dud one here, but um, we'll see how we get on. Um, but you would just want to complete the cut so it goes through both layers. So we're using um, the black piece, almost as like our template, um, to pop that cut line all the way through. So we've got a little slit. There's four on each piece, and it goes through both layers. And we are going to use that as sort of how we stick our actual um, bow together when we come to shape it. So if we go around then just check from the front side that the cut line has gone all the way through here. But there's something I absolutely love about templates. It's sort of like a, it's a nice process. Um, it's one of those you want to sit down, you've got a few hours um, to sort of play. You just want to really enjoy your crafting. Something like this is going to be absolutely perfect. You start off sort of drawing around everything. Then you start to stick everything together. Things start to take shape quite quickly. Um, but it is, like I say, it is very much a process. It's something that you um, really want to enjoy, enjoy creating at the end and get an absolutely fabulous finished result. Um, but it's something that absolutely is so, so much fun to do. And they are easy to use. Perhaps you do do a lot of die cutting. I know I die cut um, practically every time, like just about every time I craft. Um, my die cutting machine, my Gemini, will be right beside me and I'll be using it time and time again. But there was something so nice, sort of almost a little bit back to basics about when I was creating these, um, these demos the other night, just to have just your templates, some pattern paper, your cardstock, um, and a rule and a pencil and your templates and it's all you need um, to be able to I guess to much these. easier to try and put these in afterwards and try and line up the two the two slits in oh. the two different bits and then mat layer them together, I guess that would be a Can nightmare. Can you imagine? Oh, that would be super, super difficult, wouldn't it? It's just... You... Um, what GSM is the black layer? I missed it, Gilmore says. If oh, you really sorry. It. Thank you for that one, uh, Gilmore, reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't actually mention. So the black layer is about 250 GSM and then the top layer, I believe, are 12 by 12 pads are... 180. So with something like this, you don't want to use something super, super thick, especially as we are actually layering the two layers together. So if you did have two layers of 300, like our multi-purpose card, you'd end up with something that was basically 600 GSM. So it would be a little bit thick, um, as we actually need to sort of bend and shape these. So I'd go for... Hmm, how long's a piece of string? I'd go for... You don't really want to be going much over 250 for either layer. Okay, Something nope. like this. So a layer of about 250 and a layer of about 180 is perfect. As you probably will be using um, pattern paper for the top layer, that'll probably be about 180. So for the base layer, about 250 will be perfect. Amazing. As, as we come to see now, we're going to want to add a little bit of shape to them. But what I tend to do first is I start with my base layer. So your base layer, obviously we've got our card to start with. First layer of the bow is the one with the tails. Then we have the larger bow piece and then the smaller piece that goes on top. 
So I find it easiest to start with my base layer. And all we want to do is we want to just add a little bit of shape into here. And you want to be doing this really when that glue has dried. Your tacky glue is pretty fast drying. So by the time that I've popped those um, little cut lines in with my craft knife, you should be good to go in terms of shaping this layer. So we're going to add that onto there like so. So a little bit of tacky glue, or I might go for my... Um, tape runner just for a little bit of speed just into the center we don't want it too much at the edges um, as they're going to be sort of sticking over the edge of the card blank anyway and we want to have that little bit of movement to our tails of our bow to give it that really sort of impressive 3d finish effect so that's our first layer of our bow and then we bring in our larger layer of those two similar looking pieces and all we want to start doing is breaking down those fibers in the cardstock so just starting to mold it into shape and this is why you don't want something too thick because it could potentially crack and it could give you a not sort of the finished result that you want. So just start to manipulate that car stock and just start to bend it into position. Before we start to try and stick it together, it's much easier if we're almost like we're starting to train that card. We're almost like we're telling it this is the way you're going to bend. Um, so just starting to prepare that for the next stage. And then all we need to do is we just need to bend these tails over and what we want to do is we want to get these ends of this piece through the little slits that we've just popped in. Perfect. So it's actually really, really easy to do this bit. And those will go through there like so. But we're going to want to pop a little bit of adhesive and I'll probably use my red liner tape um, when I'm at home just so it's really, really nice and strong. But your tape runner still is strong enough. So we want that tape just on that inside piece there so what we do is we slot that through that little tab there and then that piece that's sticking through will just stick down onto our bit of tape that we've popped onto there and it's exactly the same for all of the uh, three remaining brilliant uh, Shadia says the bow template was on my son's wedding table oh which is lovely everyone went crazy for the design um, Shadio says the uh, knit with bloom was with grace uh, was what they used for their bow card actually I think this Ooh. is a really great way of using those well, 12 by 12 so many of um, our you know crafty friends collect isn't it Lily because so mm. many people collect the 12 by 12 these are the perfect size to use these I don't have many 12 by 12s at all Joe do you not no none at all I feel like you no. might be fibbing. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but this is absolutely the perfect way to uh, get all those 12 by 12s out. And to tell you the honest truth, um, I've got a lot of 12 by 12s. I think all you guys at home know. I think I've got just about every single one we've currently got available on the website. We um, have so many now. So it's so many beautiful paper gosh, pads yeah. available. Gilmore says, let Joe know, I meant 50 styles of Jake's hair, like oh. 50 shades of grey. I'm not sure about that uh, simulation there. What she didn't mean was that 1950s style of haircut. She means the, the ever-changing hair styles of Jake is what she's highlighting. I get that. Uh, Diane says these are absolutely beautiful uh, as well, these collections. Any questions you've got, get them into me. I'd love oh, to know, yeah. actually, um, if you've gone for these and you've made them up, how you've been Ooh. finding them. You can let me know in the comments. Crafters TV on Facebook, Crafters Companion across on YouTube. I think you're definitely right in what you said, Lily. When you look at these, you think, gosh, they're going to be complicated or they're going to be a challenge to put together when you break it down it's actually quite a few simple steps absolutely it's just taking it step by step so what we've done is we've just threaded all of our little tabs through the slits and then we're going to pop this onto our card base so i've popped some of my um, tape runner into the center you don't need it on these areas just into the center i sometimes pop a little bit there um, but it's totally up to you as long as that center piece is anchored and then just line that up make sure the bottom of your tails aren't overhanging that bottom of your card base and um, just so that it's going to stand okay um, when it's all popped together and we're just going to press that down i tend to flatten this a little bit more so that when we've popped our next layer on we can have that a little bit more shaped and a little bit fuller but for our base layer i tend to not flatten it completely but flatten it a little bit more um, like so and then it's just a case of doing exactly the same on that top layer as we did to the one below so it is i don't want to say the word repetitive because i think that makes it sound like it's really boring and the last thing this is is boring it's such a fun process um, to do but it's one of those once you've learned what you're doing and you sort of know that technique then it is easy to replicate it and once you've done a couple of these as i know once you start doing them they do get a little bit addictive to uh, use all your different pattern papers and experiment with different um, embellishments 
uh, try out different colours, perhaps you want to create your own backgrounds um, to use for your pattern papers. So once you have done one or two, you're sort of flying through and you know exactly what you're doing um, and you, you won't really need to follow the instructions anymore. So it becomes a little bit like second nature, but you know you've got your instructions there should you need them. And as well, a nice little note, um, thing to note is that in the packaging you'll see on the front, it gives you a little link. And if you follow that link, um, it'll take you through to our website. We've actually got video tutorials. Um, it's our lovely Jan taking you through exactly how to use all of these templates. So if you are a bit lost, I know sometimes instructions are great. We do have the diagrams and the words on our instructions. But if you are struggling a little bit and you're thinking it's not quite making sense, it's not quite fitting into place, um, then just follow the link and a video always does help just to be able to see it step by step of how you create these and there's one of those for each of the three different 3D templates It's always this super handy to have isn't it? Absolutely, so you can pause, you can rewind, you can sort of craft along if you like um, with Jan who takes you through step by step exactly how to pop these together but they are they're not hard to put together, especially when you look at them, you think, blimey, there's a lot of detail in there, a lot of layers, and you might look in the packet and think there's an awful lot of different templates, um, but it's every single piece has a purpose. And every single piece, you just treat it in exactly the same way. You draw around each piece, you cut them out, uh, and you pop them together, and you end up with an absolutely fabulous finished result. So with that piece, we've done exactly the same as we did on our first one, the larger um, bow layer. We've threaded our, um, I keep wanting to say ribbon, <laughs> the ends of the tails through those little slots. And then we've just put a little bit of adhesive onto the back in the middle, and we're gonna glue that onto that bottom layer. Now it looks a little bit untidy in the middle, but not to worry, within our, and I mean, look at that, it's starting to take shape absolutely already. Within our, um, our templates, we also get these lovely decorative pieces to pop in the middle. So you get the frame and then you get that inner piece. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my, you can do it either way, you can have it like a frame or you can have it like a matte layer. And we can just stick those um, two together and that's gonna form the center of our bow. But you can take this as far as you like. I mean, you can absolutely pack it full of embellishments. You can bring out all your, perhaps your foam flowers. I know we've got a lovely bundle um, on today's show of some different um, flowers that you can use with your foam. So you want to be bringing in all those different types uh, of techniques. You can be, perhaps you've got some lovely foliage dyes or butterfly dyes. Perhaps you've picked up, um, if you've seen the flower dyes that we've got on tonight's Second Chance Sunday, those would look absolutely fabulous uh, on these as well. But if you want to keep them quite plain, quite basic, I say plain, there's nothing plain about this, but in terms of in the embellishments, if you want to go not so heavy on the embellishments and let those pattern papers really shine, um, then that's going to work brilliantly as well too. And all I'm doing is I'm layering up that foam to get a nice thick piece, so three layers onto there, and then that's just going to go in the centre of our bow just to finish it off. And then finally, as a finishing touch, I've got one of our um, Gemini mini dies, and that's the With Love. I've die cut that again in black, so it's quite quite a striking bow. I tend to, all the other um, ones of these I've made, I've gone for really like pastel Without tones. the tails on these, Lily, these make quite an impressive, impressive bunting if you wanted to make some bunting out of yeah, these, wouldn't they? Yeah, absolutely. Or I'm thinking now, take off the tails, maybe cut another one and put it sort of at mm. uh, 90 degrees. It could be a yeah, yeah, rosette. Yeah, as well. great idea. So definitely have a look at, uh, look at them and have a play around and think of using them in different ways. I mean, you can use the elements separate. So like I was saying earlier, you could use that card base um, on its own without the bow, just as a nice shaped card. Of course, you could be doing the same with that frame. Um, but yeah, lots and lots of different uses for these, not just um, as your 3D bow card. And just to finish it off, just to break up this black here, because we've got a fair amount of black on that frame, and just to, to break that area up and bring in those yellow tones that we've got from the backing papers, that lovely Nature's Garden sunflower pad, that I believe you should still be able to find on the website if I have not bought them all. <laughs> Given I do love that, uh, that paper pad, I know you guys love it too. Um, so you should find that on the website. But finishing touch, a couple of pearls, top and bottom. You could be adding lots more embellishments in, but just as quite a simple, 
easy to put together card. Look how impressive that looks, but you saw how easy it was to put together. Just takes a little bit of time to draw around your templates, but I have to say I love, love drawing around the templates. I think it's something so therapeutic about creating this all from scratch, but so mm, much it's fun It's massive as well, isn't it? It's a it really is. big uh, statement card. You know, if you are really into larger cards, larger projects, you're going to absolutely love this. But there is a bit of everything in this collection that you've got just here. So first off, this is the butterfly box that you've got, and that's going to give you, uh, this one just here, it's like that box style card that you've got so they're the first two templates then the next one is your tulip this is going to make that tulip box that opens up for you very impressive slightly smaller project and then the really really large uh, bow card that you've got there three different sets of templates it's a really big impressive uh, selection that I'll give you the details again for all three of them together because that's how you get the best value for money uh, and if you want to go for the three of them together here it's 23.97 or 30.95 saving you 20 percent coming in under 20 pounds or 25 dollars if you are a platinum member so do not miss out on those i want to share something else with you that was all, i mean the whole collection of homebody was very very popular um, but the papers specifically have been very popular since it launched so in here what you're going to get it's always lovely to be able to bring you these two together you're going to get the 24 sheets of the luxury cardstock and then you're also going to get the 12 by 12 paper pad included in here too very very pretty this very floral lots of lovely greens and pinks and greys running all the way through it if you love fussy cutting again lots of different options for you when it comes to fussy cutting with this particular sheet too just a really, really lovely pad, that one. Uh, this here, you get uh, 24 double-sided sheets uh, in your 12 by 12 and a further 24 sheets in the luxury card sort too. So 48 sheets there for 24.99 or 30.99, which is excellent value. Again, under 20 pounds or $25 if you want to get your hands on those. The next one I want to share with you as well is this one, the favor box. Now I love this because there's loads of sort of elements within this that you could use elsewhere. All what you can do is draw the whole thing together and create a really lovely full finish project. Um, Deborah says I need to use the templates. They look so pretty when finished. Talking about the last one, have you got them and not used them, Deborah? I will tell you off for that. Uh, so I know, tut tut, you can't, you've got, to, you've got to use them in order to make fabulous things. They don't make fabulous things if they stay in the packaging. Uh, Mary Ryan says, I just love the tulip template. I have all three and they are absolutely terrific. Lots of you talking about loving owning those. I want to share this next one with you because there's lots of bits in here that I think you'll be able to use on their own. Um, for instance, these nesting dies with the torn edges work brilliantly on their own. But this is actually the flip book element of this next collection. You've also got the decorative accessories in here. But then what you're able to do is actually turn this into a much bigger project using uh, the spine templates, uh, the pocket page templates you're getting, and you also will get the accessory template within here too. These make really cool usable sets. I can't believe you get all of this. That price is unbelievable. Wrong. Oh, it's not that it's not the uh, we've got the, not the correct details. So let's find out what what bit we are. Let's find out what mm, one we nice. are looking at. So they're the favor boxes that we've got there on the screen, which I'm guessing. Uh, right, we are going to uh, we're going to we're going to come back to you uh, on that one just there. So these here that I've got in front of me. These are the Mini Memories three-piece selection then that we're yeah. looking at here, which is these details, 3037 or 35.08. Still a great deal on that, saving you 20%. And we need to have a little look at this one just here. So it is these ones here that we need to be looking at. So these ones just here. Let's change those we'll details the back. <laughs> uh, and we'll go through these ones here, which is the next going to be our next element so this is the details there on your screen brilliant so uh, the ornate favor box is the first one you get uh, the locking heart favor box you've got the country cottage in here and you get the happy heart as well so they are uh, the favor box collection again the price though saves you over 50 pounds almost 60 dollars uh, on those which is brilliant because if you'd have bought them uh, individually uh, you'd be looking at uh, $16.99 each or $19.95. So you're actually buying one and getting three of these for free when you get them in this particular configuration. $13.59 or $15.96 
uh, if you want to get your hands on those right there. Lots of you still chatting away, lots of love coming in for that last demo of Lilies as well. Uh, talking about the bows, Sandy said I made several of the bows to give away his birthday cards. And thinking of you cards, recipients were so happy and showed them off to others. Now I make more uh, for the others people, I love that. Um, and Shadia says found the bow was really easy uh, to do. Uh, still needs to try the butterfly as well. Favourite boxes, something again, very practical Lily, aren't they? Yeah, and I think these are perfect if you've never tried anything 3D, if you've never tried templates and using templates and dye together, these I think are probably the best place to start and with that price. Crazy to pay for one and get all four. It's absolutely no, amazing, amazing value, isn't it? Really amazing. But you get this something sort of every die set within that collection does offer you something different. So you've got four really different styles, but again, they all use that same process. So once you understand that technique and how to put one together, you'll be fine doing all four. But something a little bit different in your different designs. We're going to be working with the Locking Heart Favour box uh, for this particular demo. So of course, you do get instructions including, included um, once again. So it's really easy to follow how to pop these together. But I'll be honest, I don't think you'll even need the instructions. They are that easy. And you sort of look at the template and it's like, right, I know exactly what I'm doing. So within this um, collection, a little bit different to the last one we looked at, we get both templates and we get dies. So if we look at the dies, I'm not being funny, but if that was a template, I wouldn't be cutting that out no, by hand. No, it'd be quite <laughs> difficult, wouldn't it? So again, it's just about things being fit for purpose. It's about things being right for the job. So our template, absolutely, we can be cutting around that with ease. But those decorative bits, we've done it as a die because, quite frankly, who's going to cut that out and by And do you hand? get four dies included absolutely. in each of them? Yes. Yeah, so... Because I thought for that price, you'd, you'd get one, and you'd cut yeah. it and recut it and recut it. Which I mean you can do, but the thing to bear in mind is every single time you put a piece of card through your die cutting machine, dies work on pressure. So every single time you put that through the die cutting machine, you're going to flatten your previous die cut. Right, I see. So if you cut one, and then you cut the next one, the first one would sort of get um, flattened a little bit. Right. With dies, you have that beveled edge that gives you the lovely finish. Mm. So your first one would sort of look not quite as crisp and neat. So by cutting them all at one time, not only does it save you time, but you're going to get the best finish possible, which is fabulous. And we do also get, it's not just four dies in each, it's actually eight because you get the inner detail and the outer, and we'll have a little look at that um, a little bit later. So those are our decorative detailed dies. Of course, we don't always have to use them um, every single time when we are using our template. The template on its own is going to give you a fabulous result even without that decoration. Perhaps you want to do this in pattern card. It's going to look fabulous that way too. So the way, way I find easiest to do these, we've got three sort of um, straight edges. So I'll trim my cardstock so it's exactly the right height so basically I don't need to draw around the top and the bottom is um, the long and short of that. just saves us a little bit of time. And can you get that out of a piece of A4? Is that just Absolutely, over an A4? Yeah. Is it a piece yeah, of A4? Yeah, it will get through a piece of A4. If we bring in our Gemini A4 plates, fits onto A4. So Perfect. absolutely fabulous. I've used A3 card just because um, I tend to use quite a lot of A3 card uh, when I'm working my Centuras. I find I get, it goes a little bit further for me, but you don't need to use um, A4 three card, A4 card is going to be perfect. Because uh, at the end of the day, if it was larger than A4, then you'd need your Gemini Pro to be able to cut your detail in. So it's been very cleverly thought about. Um, it gives you still a nice size box, but with it fitting on the A4, it means that when we cut those decorative panels in, that we can still use our normal Gemini. So just take your time, drawing around the outside. Again, a nice sharp pencil is absolutely crucial um, for these templates. And just go all the way around the outside drawing in all that detail. So I tend to pop all my lines around the outside and then you'll see again similar to our template we looked at to start with with that hexagon. We've got these inner lines and these are our score lines and I don't tend to draw all the way across them. I'll just mark on either side. These are our score lines. So I only need to mark top and bottom and then we know that's where we've got to pop our score lines in using our scoreboard. So just mark those onto there. Really easy to do. And then we can remove our template and exactly the same as I said um, with our last um, last template that we're doing. If you do find it easier to um, work with something that's going to hold your stencil in place, then use something like a stick and spray, some sort of repositionable adhesive, and that will hold that into position. You won't have to worry quite so much about anchoring it down using your hand. But again, it's just whatever works best for you. Excellent. And, uh, oh. Mary says, made this into locking box someone, only to watch them rip the top off to get inside. Wow. She was not happy. 
Yeah, I'd be having removed strong the interlocking words. arm. Ripped the heart off the top. <gasps> I oh, know. How rude. How rude. They'd be coming straight off the Christmas card list, I can absolutely. tell you that. Absolutely. Sure. No more nice interlocking boxes for them, I don't no, think. No, really. absolutely not. Um, but the, every single design within the collection is a little bit different. So we've got the heart that interlocks um, on this particular design, but the a sort of closing mechanism for all of the different boxes within um, this collection is a little bit different so um, something for sort of every every recipient which is fabulous so all we're going to do and the cardstock that i'm using for this particular box is our centura pearl fresh white it's a lovely thick cardstock you want something so a little bit different for this one different to that um 3D bow card, you want something that's nice and strong because this is basically our box base. So, really, you want to be over 280 GSM. So, about 300 is going to be absolutely perfect. So, your multi purpose card will be great. Your craft card and black card will work nicely as well. Any of your Centura Pearl will work a treat for these. Um, but, you want it to have a nice bit of strength with that being our box base. So all we do is we'd continue cutting all the right way around the edges. Do take a little bit of time when you're doing that. Um, it is slightly more intricate than your bow, um, but it is still very achievable to cut all the way around there. Then what you're gonna end up with is something like this. So all we have to do is we have to pop the score lines in. So if we bring back in the one that we started, can see we've got where the score line starts and where the score line ends. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna line that up on your scoreboard and you're just gonna take a scoring tool and score all the way down to where that line starts and where it ends. Of course, you can draw, draw through all the way through your template. Um, I just prefer to mark basically means I don't need to rub my pencil lines out, which is always fabulous, saves us a bit of time. But just add in your score lines and then that's going to give you a finished result like we've got here. Only difference that we've done with this one is we've taken these dies and remember how I was saying you've got an outer and an inner. So if you cut both together, it'll give you a cut out detailed design. If you cut your square, obviously it'll just give you a coloured square. But if you cut that one on its own, it will give you a result like that. So it'll cut into the box. And for this particular box, we're only cutting uh, one side um, of detail. So that's going to be sort of the front of our box. Uh, and I've gone from the second one from left. That's going to be the front piece of our box. When I have the other three as solid, we're going to have that almost like a window so we can look through into the centre of our box. You might have lots of lovely sweet treats that you want to um, give a little bit of a sneak peek of on the inside or perhaps you want to fill it with tissue paper completely up to you but we've got the window on there you could be asking adding acetate or even vellum behind and um, to give you a really nice finish and um, completely up to you lots of different options with this but what we're going to do now is we're going to start to stick our box together so red line tape is going to be brilliant for this your tape runner will work nicely as well with it being such a strong adhesive and um, but i tend to use um, my red line tape for boxes and just onto those tabs where we've got the edges sort of chamfered, that's where you're going to want your adhesive. Um, and what you'll find is, even though you put your score lines in, when you run this through your die cutting machine, it won't get rid of, rid of those score lines. It will just flatten them a little bit. So it's just a case of going back in and reinforcing those score lines, and um, perhaps using a bone folder um, to take, take a little bit more care over doing this, but just reinforcing those score lines, and then we're going to stick the box together. So it's quite nice with this one. We don't stick the lid. We have that um, sort of locking mechanism to stick it together. The way I find easier is to remove the tape from one, uh, one piece at a time, just so you're not sort of battling with lots of exposed adhesive. There's nothing yeah. worse if we've got one, the bit you're trying to stick doesn't stick and then all the other bits yeah. stuck. Yeah, oh, we've, we've all been, been there. there. <laughs> that was me the other night. I thought, oh, I'll, I'll remove all the back and I'll get this done, done quickly. I've not got a lot of time there. I just ended up in a right sticky pickle. It was not good. But I find it easier to line up the sides first. So I've stuck my sides together. Just make sure that's taken, that tape, and then to do the base. You might prefer to do the base first, totally up to you, but I always find it easier to get my sides stuck together so it's one sort of continuous piece and then go in and do my base. So I do sometimes do all three pieces with it being for our base because all we're going to do is we're going to stick them together. I tend to fold those out so I can just lie this flat for this particular moment and then just fold that in and if you are struggling to line it up and perhaps you think you're not going to get it lined up perfectly first time a little bit of your uh, tacky glue on the back of your red liner tape once you've removed and um, that backing and that will give you a bit of wiggle room if you haven't lined it up absolutely perfectly perhaps you've got a tiny little bit overhanging on the bottom like we have here 
just take a pair of scissors and literally it's as easy as just chopping that off until that's absolutely perfect and that's about bang on now so that's nice and neat and then that's all stuck together but to do our actual mechanism you've got your sort of two semicircles they go in first so just fold those two in and then our two hearts what we need to do is we just thread see where we've got the two slits really straightforward isn't it so easy and they literally just lock in as the name suggests they lock in together perfectly and that's the basis of our box but what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of embellishment onto there so within um with, on the show today we've got some fabulous flower dyes and um, you've got your rose and your hydrangea and you're also getting some lovely um, foam in with this collection and they're perfect for embellishing um, all your makes. We've actually got templates in here as well if you want to create the really large flowers but we're just going to use the dyes to die cut some of the smaller flowers. So I've got some um, blue foam, I've got some purple foam and I've got some pink foam and I almost forgot my colours then which is ever so slightly worrying um, mm. and then all we're going to do is we're just going to take our dies and again all of the foam um, that I'm using is from within that collection it's the pack that we've got with the dies and we're just going to run those through our die cutting machine you can cut several layers of foam at a time I remember watching Michelle she's going through about eight layers at once um, so if you are making lots of these packs to sell or maybe they are wedding favour boxes and you've got a lot to make then not to worry at all you can cut through lots of layers of your foam um, just in the one pass and you'll yeah, still get fab we've got that collection on the show for you as well I'll take you through that in a moment you get the foam uh, and the stencils and the dies uh, they make really lovely big flowers those don't they mm, I'll absolutely. give you the details of those in just for a few moments yeah, th that's a fabulous collection. Uh, I have to say, I do love my flower forming foam. I don't love saying it, but, but I do like no, it. No, there's, there's, there, there's certain brands out there that are even more difficult oh, to find. Oh, yes, say. yeah, <laughs> mm, yeah, definitely. Uh, we're getting off lightly with just uh, flower forming foam. Craft so, it helps if you say it in a Scouse foam. accent, you know. Flower forming foam. I can't do a scouse. It's easier accent. then. I don't know why. It's always mm. easier. Flower forming foam. That'll be me this evening practicing saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully the neighbours won't hear. That was wise. We're wondering what's going on. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to bring in our um, shaping mat. I tend to use hot glue when I'm working with my um, flower forming foam. Not going to say it in a scouse accent. <laughs> <laughs> and you can add heat into our flower forming foam. Um, to give it a little bit of shape but with these being quite small petals um, just for speed I'm just going to shape it without heating it uh, using our flower shaping mat some people tend to um, shape them like that in the hand so I can never get on with that but um, the heat in your hand will warm these up and will help, help to shape them a little bit too and um, we've got three layers for this larger um, blue flower and now these are supposed to technically make a hydrangea and um, that's what they're being designed for but of course can always create your fancy flowers uh, you don't have to create I guess what they've been exactly what they've been designed to do um, so you're going to get a fabulous result however you use them so a little bit of hot glue and I should really have my totally Tiffany hot glue gun stand but I've not got it to hand um, and make sure we just line that up so I like to overlap the petals a little bit so they don't flush and um, sit flush with that layer beneath just to give you a little bit of a fuller effect and I find getting stuck to all my glue which is never, never a good thing just while it's drying just add a little bit of shape back into that using your um, ball tool and then for our next layer I'm going to add some more glue into the center of that and then just line that up so that we're filling in that space with the two petals below don't stick your finger to the middle much nicer to have stamens or gems in the middle than a, a finger hanging out but um, you know do just take care with your um, hot glue I find that's the best adhesive when we are sticking together um, our flower forming foam. So nice and slow. Um, but a couple of layers of these is going to give you a really nice full finish to your flowers. So we're going to pop that onto there and then just add that into the center. It's decided it's going to close up, so we're just going to open it back out like so drop that into the center it's easier to work with tweezers i know a lot of people prefer using tweezers to say i, I can never get on with tweezers i'm not too sure why um, but if you do find it a lot easier do work with your tweezers when you've got small little flowers like these um, but this is one of the smaller ones within that die set um, so it's going to give you a really nice delicate finish especially onto a box like this we don't want to sort of overwhelm the design with lots of massive flowers and take away from that lovely die cut detail we just want a little finishing touch um, onto our um, finished project 
So I'm going to move that out of the way and then we're just going to bring in our box. So I always like to sort of layer up exactly how I think I want my design to go before I stick it down. I think I'm happy um, with that. So we're going to have the larger flower in the centre, so the blue one in the middle of the other two. I'm going to add this onto the top left hand corner using again a little bit of hot glue. Is there anything you could use if you didn't have hot glue? Um, uh, your chunky glue, otherwise chunky. known as 3D Colal Glue Gel, um, works a treat. It's just, it's funny because I'm really patient with certain things, but there's certain things in craft. I don't like waiting for glue to dry, quite frankly. It just stops us from doing the fun bit, stops us from doing the proper crafting. So I prefer to use my hot glue gun as it does dry instantly. But your Colal 3D Glue Gel will give you um, that perfect bond it sticks you always say we always say that it sticks almost like concrete and um, once it's dry so it's going to give you a lovely um, finished result and you don't need to worry about them falling off but the only thing is like I say is you do have to wait for it to dry and then we're going to finish those off with some gems you could use pearls or you could be threading some of your stamens through the middle these are really diddy little pearls uh, not they're not pearls it's all the gems I'm going to add them into the center um, just like so a slightly larger gem for your larger flower and slightly smaller ones for your two smaller flowers just to tie in and then just to balance this to finish it off we've got some detail on that top left we want to balance that on the bottom right so what I've done is I've taken one of my um, card front colouring pads and this is the butterflies and botanics and as well as the lovely images you've got within those pads to colour in you do also get um, some of your foiled and die cut sentiments and I have to say I use these um, quite an awful lot um, and we're just going to add that onto that bottom right hand corner just to balance that and finish it off as that final finishing touch onto our box. We just need to wait for the glue to grab. But once that's grabbed, look how cute, um, but really quite easy to pop together using some of our foam flowers, cutting the detail into one edge of our box. But that's our fabulous Locking Heart Favour box. Really, really cool, aren't they? And the great thing is that you're only buying, well, you're paying for one of these, you're getting all four of them sent to you. So, I mean, if you've seen these before, very popular when we launched them at the higher price, but if you've maybe been waiting for the deal on these, this is definitely the deal to grab them on. A quite remarkable value as well. Even at 16.99 each, and you can see you get four of the actual decorative dies in there as well, and the outline dies. And then, of course, the stencil is what's going to allow you to create that main box mechanism. This one's your ornate favour box. You also have the Locking Heart Favour Box. You've got the Country Cottage style there. And you'll also get the Happy Heart as well. All four of them for $16.99 or $19.95. That is what you should be paying each for them. Saving you over £50, almost $60, which is absolutely incredible value. The other thing that Lily used there uh, with these is the foam collection. So it's the foam and the dye collection. So you get 12 sheets of the foam. It's a spring foam that you are looking at. Really lovely selection of colours. And then you're also going to get a couple of die sets included too. This one here is the hydrangea. You've got a selection of stencils and dies. So you've got for the really big outer petals, you've got stencils and then the dies for the stencil at the centre. You've got the hydrangea and you've also got the regal rose in there too. $17.98 or $22.90 is your price there on those lots and lots of love coming in for that last demonstration uh, crafty says really lovely box uh, jill says beautiful uh, and crafty says i love this flower idea um, and really really nice to see those also showing as well you don't always have to heat them lily if you don't want to either it gives you a different effect doesn't it not heating them absolutely and it's a little bit quicker let's be honest but with them being so small they are easy to shape just get your flower shaping um, tools you'll find those on the website and um, but really easy to create but equally you could be using paper with those dies as well or even felt for your applique with some of those in that collection so a great set to go for mm, absolutely they are now i need to tell you about something else well, i'm not going to tell you about it so i was going to tell you about it ourselves something very exciting is happening here at crafty's tv all next week take a look <laughs> look where i am this is our amazing brand new warehouse this is the one you always hear us talk about, our global fulfillment centre, just down the road from our offices. Anyway, it's gorgeous, it's brand spanking new, but already it is literally crammed full to the rafters with stuff. Amazing stuff, but stuff that we need to clear out and make some space for. So the good news is, all of next week, I am taking over the whole channel. 
Crafters TV is having a full-on Sarah-style takeover for Sarah's Craft Clearout. We've got deals going on all week, brand new drops every single day, amazing shows planned throughout the week. You do not want to miss it. Keep an eye out for an email, keep an eye out on our socials for more information, and I'll see you bright and early for Wake Up Call on Monday morning. Quick buy, all your crafty must-haves in a flash. Make light work of intricate and delicate die cutting designs with the Pokey Tool from Crafters Companion. An absolute essential part of any paper crafters kit, its precise tip has been designed to release the tiniest pieces to reveal your finished results with absolute precision. And to make sure your finished project is perfect, each Pokey Tool has a rubber tip protector, so there's no risk of damaging your die cutting design or yourself. The Crafter's Companion Pokey Tool is such an essential craft item, we've included two in each set. Quick Buy, get yours now. Quick Buy, all your crafting must-haves in a flash. Draw, decorate, and customize your world with the colorful Spectrum Noir acrylic paint markers. Each premium paint marker gives opaque coverage on ceramic, glass, wood, and let's not forget paper, cardstock, and canvas. These versatile markers are filled with highly pigmented premium water-based paint, offering beautiful, rich, and smooth coverage. The colors can be blended together and the fast-drying opaque paint is ideal for layering. A three millimeter bullet tip offers smooth strokes and a precision valve mechanism allows rich and consistent flow with no clogging. Quick buy, all your crafty must-haves in a flash. Very, very busy. A lot of you loving this stencil masterclass. Right, this has some great deals as well as some fabulous demonstrations. I need to remind you of the 1P goodie bags. Now, we launched these on Thursday during cartload. We have a handful uh, of each of them left. They're actually all limited stock, so you will need to be quick for them uh, if you want them. I'm going to start off with this one, the Spectral Noir 1P goodie bag, because quite remarkable. And you buy these great, great value products first. So you've got your um, Aqua Blend pencils in here, 24 watercolor color pencils that work so so beautifully they come beautifully packaged a really lovely selection of colors that you need for uh, your different sort of florals but there's really lovely light pastel colors you will also get the glossy highlights included in there too but for a penny then extra on top of that you get all of this lovely lot and I mean it is absolutely amazing the value you're getting it's like a sort of best of uh, of some of the brand of Spectrum Noir. You've got our original tri blends there, you've got them in the portrait collection. You've got one of our discovery kits. Now, discovery kits are designed to sort of teach you a style um, of project. In this one, it is concept design. You've got five classics and an art liner worksheets and full instructions in there brilliant brilliant value on its own that we've also got some of our tri-color aqua pens in here these blend together seamlessly you've got some of our metallic paint markers and also our uh, acrylic paint markers as well they go onto a whole host of different surfaces from glass vellum acetate um stone mdf you, you name it you can use it on the, with those then you've also got illustrators in here and one of our quick drying ink pads as well so within there you're getting 75 pounds or 111 dollars worth of extras for a penny or a cent, which is amazing value for money. You get absolutely all of that. It's been very busy on this since Thursday and continues to be really busy on them now. Let me share with you also these. So, a great selection of festive items for you. This here is uh, some double sided, uh, double sided dies. If you've not had these and you batch make, they are an absolute dream for that. Because you pop these in, you will need the double sided plates with them, but they cut the mat and the layer out at the same time. And and you've got one of our ho-ho-ho stamp and dies in there too. So you're buying those two items, 30.99 or 37.95, and then we're gonna give you all of this lot for a penny. 86 pounds worth for $106. We've got stamps in here. You've also got uh, embossing folders and stencils. You've got one of our amazing scene creator card dies in here. You've also got some brilliant stamps and dies there to create gorgeous reefs. One of our um, die cut layerable sentiments, and you'll get something to pop your gift cards in at Christmas too. So for a penny or a cent, you're getting another 86 pounds 
or $106 worth of value. If you came back after this promotion was done, $30.99 or $37.95 would literally just get you those two items. Today, if you're grabbing it now for the penny or cent more, you're gonna get that extra £86 or $106 worth of extra items in there. And the other one we have got for you is this one. Now, I absolutely love this uh, because the Secret Garden Luxury Cardstock Collection is a beautiful colorway collection. It's really brilliant, no matter if you're crafting with Secret Garden or you're not using it uh, together with the collection. It's just something, it's a really nice sort of pastel color palette. And then you've also got the Farmhouse uh, Wax Seal kit in there too. 29.99, 36.91 is what you'd pay for those any other day however for an extra penny or cent more during this promotion you're going to get all of these gorgeous bits as well so from a secret garden you've got a couple of items here we've got some lovely stamps that are designed to be colored and that really cool big gate that is your uh, gateway to the garden in there you've got the um let love grow this makes a little seed packet from our farmhouse collection you've also got some whimsical lanterns from nature's garden a uh, secret garden you've got some beautiful stamps here as well to be colored up from our gnome collections as well from summer gnomes you're going to get the gnome girl and also then the gnome kissing gate from our winter gnome collection those extra items there they are only costing you a penny or a cent which is brilliant i think though we saved the best till last i'm going to say it because uh, a great deal on the midi you could get the midi for a penny a penny or a cent for a midi the midi on its own is worth 69.99 or 89 95 to give you an idea of the value you're actually just buying these items because when you go for these items which will all work beautifully with your mini you've got some of our iris folding dies stencils connecting sentiments also one of our creator cards with stamps and dies and our butterfly uh well, sorry i'll be our butterfly waterfall mechanism buy those and then for the extra penny you get 69.99 89.95 worth of gemini midi i love this this is the machine that you'll always see us presenters using uh, if we ever join in on something like a craft along or along those lines because it suction caps to the work surface it's brilliant it has loads of power because it's got that name of gemini on this it really has all the pressure but what i love about it's just that folder based system so it means no sandwiches to worry about or anything like that cardstock in thin metal die close this up feed it through your machine and it's going to do all that die cutting for you because it is hand wound it is super fast as well um right the spectrum noir bag i'm afraid i'll just give so if you want that 63 96 78 80 to get your hands on that particular one just there um let's co go back to though the spectrum noir bag because so uh, that's limited stock. The um, the um, Gemini MIDI one is limited stock. So the Spectrum Noir bag sold out, sold out and gone. Right, brilliant. If you've got that, uh, well done. If it's in your basket, I'm afraid you're going to have to remove it because it has sold out and gone. Uh, so uh, please remove that from your basket if you have it. Congratulations for all of those that managed to get their hands on it. Right, we're going to go back to the 3D template collection. You just saw uh, the lovely Lily creating the bow with this particular collection. We're now going to move on and check out the, uh, I think it's the butterfly uh, this time around it is indeed so that's the um, templates for the butterfly you've then got your tulip box in here and you will also get the bow that you saw lily create with too so you're getting a lot of stencils in there for that price 23.97 or 30.95 is your price here saving you 20 percent under 20 pounds or 25 dollars if you're a platinum member crafty on youtube says what a midi for one p no way i know yes way uh, as long as you're quick they are going to be going the same way as that Spectrum Noir bag did, if you are not fast. Lots and lots of love coming in for all of uh, Lily's makes. Kate Fleming's just hit platinum. Uh, congratulations, uh, Kate. Kate, welcome to uh, the club. If you've got any questions, please get them in to me. But I know Lily's got loads more uh, she wants to share with us next. Absolutely. So, like Joe said, we're going to be bringing back, going right back to the start of the show with those fabulous 3D templates. We're going to have a little look at the butterfly box next. So, exactly the same as the bow card that we looked at earlier. So, you're getting all your templates included. 
tells you on the back exactly what you're getting. Again, that link to the video showing you the tutorial. But of course, we do also get all of our instructions included. So I've sort of prepped this a little bit ahead of time, uh, just so I can show you sort of the most important bits of putting it together. So you'll see on your instructions that piece A and piece B are pretty much the same. The only difference with piece B is you actually have some little marking areas and that's to help you actually position um, your, um, your top layers when you come to stick them together. So piece A and piece B are pretty much the same. And if we start with these two pieces, again, we've just drawn around our template onto craft card. And with this actually being a box, you want to think a little bit thicker. So sort of 250, 300 GSM is going to be perfect for this. We've drawn around it onto craft card. We've added in our score lines. Then all we're going to do is we're going to create this into a box really, really easily. So red liner tape on our tabs. Then I find it easier to stick together our smaller tabs first and then go in with your longer ones as we start to build the box. So if you've ever created boxes before, then I think you'll find this really super, super easy. And the sort of basis of this whole butterfly box is two boxes that we stick together, then we add some lovely layers in to give you that, um, that sort of butterfly effect. Gives you a really impressive finish. And this, I have to say, is probably the one um, out of the three templates that you'll look at and you'll think that's the most complicated because I think it looks so impressive but it is again it's a case of um, just following that process breaking it down into different steps so starting off by drawing around all your separate pieces cutting them out adding in any score lines if you need to not all the pieces do have score lines but like for example the box that we've got here um, we've got some score lines that you just need to pop in using your scoring tool and your scoring board uh, and then that starts to give you um, your box. So if we take the tape off the larger tabs, stick that together and exactly the same on this one. Now you can choose whether you want it to be um, a top opening box or have the opening at the side, completely up to you, different options with these. But for this particular one, um, just to make it a little bit easier for demonstration uh, and for actually storing the box, we're actually going to seal all the way around. So it's almost like a faux box. Um, you could be adding decoration onto these panels. Perhaps it's um, maybe for something like a christening or a baptism and you want verses written on there. And um, then you can use this almost like as book pages rather than a proper functioning box. Um, so we are sealing these two tabs and this tab here. If you wanted a side opening box, then all you'd do is you'd basically just not stick this piece together and that will give you a fully functioning box. In this particular instance, we're just going to fold those tabs in and then again, using red liner tape, with it being construction, we want it to be nice and strong and secure, so red liner tape will be perfect for this. But I do always say, if you are struggling to line things up, perhaps you're not too confident um, with your, your lining up first time around, then do always just pop a little bit of your tacky glue onto the backs of your red liner tape once you've peeled um, that liner off, and that will give you uh, that little bit of time to manoeuvre. If you do have little overhanging bits, perhaps where you've not cut it out absolutely perfectly, just trim those off and then that will give you a really nice finished result on your box like so. So using our two templates, we basically end up with two of those. On one of those, if you do choose to use the markings on the template, you'll have your little template onto there that shows the positioning, but I tend to actually leave that off and do it by eye. A brilliant thing about these um, boxes is we do also get all the mats and layers included as templates. So for each one, you're going to need to cut two of the larger, longer mat and layer. And again, you are getting the right number of templates for each piece. So two of those, and you'll need four of those. And all I've done is on my other box, I've already popped the mats and layers onto there. Just using some of our pattern paper from our lovely um, Sarah Signature Vintage Butterflies paper pad works absolutely perfectly with this particular design. And then all you're going to do is you're going to pop your um, obviously a longer mat and layer onto that long edge and then your two smaller mats and layers go on the sides top and bottom. So you're not even having to measure and work out what size you need your mats and layers for the sides. Everything's already been included as a template so it just makes it really easy uh, when we come to decorate our box and it's going to give you the best possible finish result. Everything looks really well finished. It looks really nice and professional when you've got all those mats and layers onto there. So that gives us our two boxes. They are going to join together a little bit like so. But next we're going to bring in our next piece. So this piece 
is piece C. And all we've done again, so we've just drawn around that onto craft card, cut it out, and then it has a score line in the middle, but that score line is marked on that template as well, so you're not having to measure or guesstimate where that's going to be. That's already included on the template. That would actually make a lovely shape card just on its own, um, completely independent of the box. That would work lovely um, for all your card making. But what we're going to do is we're going to add some of our mats and layers onto there. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to take piece H and then that just lines up with that edge So do you there. get that in as a separate template or do you use the one for the car blank and trim that down, Lily, that uh, matte layer? Oh, this matte layer is included. That you get yep. that, that's separate included template. Well. So everything, like I say, everything has already been included. All your mats and layers, there's literally nothing that you're going to need to be um, guessing or trimming down yourself. All the mats and layers are included as a template. All your different layers um, of the actual box itself is included as a template. And like I say, the correct number as well, which makes it a lot easier to follow. You know exactly how many you actually need to cut out, which is honestly, so it makes our lives a lot easier when we come to pop these boxes together. But that is a separate template. That is template H that we've just drawn around onto some of our pattern paper. And using our tacky glue um, just gives us a little bit of wiggle room we do get a little bit of overspill, just going to wipe that off uh, and it does dry clear, so not a worry about that at all. So that's the start of our card, um, sort of card that goes on the inside. I'm going to bring in our next piece now. I'm just going to focus on one box at a time. So taking this one with our pattern paper facing outwards, so our spine's not got that pattern panelling. And this is where your positioning template will come into place. If you have used those extra dotted lines on that particular piece, then it does show you exactly where you need to stick. It looks this. like a little mermaid's tail, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? <laughs> It can be anything you want it to be. <laughs> but what we're going to do with this one is we're going to bring in that other mat and layer, and that's piece G. G. Um, so exactly the same as the one before, it's just sort of flipped. But again, you do get a separate template, so it's not a case of flipping it yourself and working out exactly which way it needs to go. Um, that is the perfect mat and layer for that piece already. We've just drawn around that again onto that same pattern paper from our vintage butterflies and we're adding that to that piece there. Then we take our piece D and don't forget this is in all of your instructions so if you are sort of thinking I'm not exactly sure um, what I'm doing, how to line it up then it is all in your instructions. And we're going to stick this over the top. What you need to bear in mind is this edge of your pattern paper you want that to overlap slightly with your box just because we don't want to see the edge of that hanging outside of our box so just make sure that that edge of the pattern paper overlaps with the box itself and then what we're going to do is we're just going to stick that down just for an instant grab i'm going to add some of my tape runner onto there so we'll only need it on that section there you could pop a little bit on that side of your box just to make sure you've got enough on that edge as well and then line that up, making sure that pattern paper is extending onto that box itself and line that up so it's sort of central, top and bottom, side to side and then once we're happy we're going to stick that down. Then what we do is we bring in this card base, if you want to call it that, um, which we layered up earlier and all that's going to do is going to, it's going to stick on there and it will complete that sort of butterfly. But first of all we're going to pop some more mats and layers onto the inside of this piece. So you get piece um, I within your set as well. And again, I've drawn around this, so I'm not having to measure exactly what size it's gonna be for these inner mats and layers. It's literally all included as a template, making it super, super easy. And there's no guesswork, there's no sort of measuring and calculating or anything like that. We know it's gonna line up perfectly with the inside of our box. And we've got one for that left-hand side and one for the right-hand side. And that's just gonna decorate the inside to give it that lovely finishing touch and bring that pattern paper design onto the inside as well as the outside so everything's going to work together beautifully. I'm going to line that up and then that's the inside of that all decorated. Of course like I say you could be adding sentiments into the centre, stamped images, anything at all and then we're going to add that onto the top of there. I guess these are really quite substantial as well with mm. all the layers on this Lily. Yeah absolutely they are, they give you a really lovely sturdy box so as long as you're using the right adhesives, um, nice strong adhesives, plenty of tape or tape runner onto there, it's going to give you a really lovely long lasting um, box. So almost like these are going to be perfect for keepsakes. Um, perhaps you're going to be popping little, I don't know, locks of hair in there, um, bits of jewellery, anything like that. Uh, it'd be perfect as a keepsake box. So that gives us that element there. And then to finish off, what we do is we add 
our box, our top box, onto the top of there like so. So that's going to give us our mechanism. So all we're going to need to do, so we can either pop the tape onto this piece or onto this piece, completely up to you. Doesn't matter either way, um, whichever you find easiest. Sometimes you'll see some of us here uh, adding sort of double, double adhesive. So we'll have adhesive, stick into adhesive and that will give you a really strong bond uh, when you need it for something like this uh, for your construction. But plenty of tape running onto there. Like I say, your red line tape will be perfect as well. And then we're just going to line that up with the box underneath. Um, so we sort of trap that butterfly design in the middle. And that gives us our opening butterfly box. How easy was that to do? But we're just going to um, decorate the front a little bit more. So our piece I that we had two into the centre. We're going to bring that, um, we've cut another of those from that same pattern paper and that's going to be our mat and layer for the front of our box. Just keep everything tying together beautifully and that's just going to centralise and again of course it fits perfectly because we've used that template and everything has already been measured. But we also get all our embellishments as well so you can choose to do this as an aperture if you prefer or you can actually um, have it as an embellishment on the top of your box so completely up to you but what we've done is we've taken template E that's the outer one the larger butterfly and we've cut template F in the center they're two separate se separate templates so you don't have to have it as a frame you can have it as a mat and layer we're going to add that over the center of our box so I'm going to take some um, I think I'm going to take some foam pads just to give that a little bit of lift um, onto our design and that's going to fill out that centre of um, the front of our box just to decorate it up a little bit more. Of course, I'm sure all you guys at home, if you're anything like me, you'll have lots of different um, butterfly designs within your stash. So any dies that you've got that have got butterflies on, perhaps stamps, absolutely be bringing those in. If you've got the Sarah Signature Vintage Butterflies collection, then that's going to work perfectly as well um, for embellishments for the front of your box. So the template's just giving you that, that base core box shape giving you all the mats and layers, but however you choose to decorate it, it's absolutely up to you. Uh, and just really go to town. If you want them to be really extravagant and over the top, then absolutely go for that and you'll get fabulous finished results. But like we're doing here, we're letting those, um, those mats and layers, those pattern papers really take centre stage and letting those speak for themselves, but you'll still get a fabulous finished result. And what I've done with this piece, is I've taken some of my 12 by 12 paper from that Vintage Butterflies collection again. I've just fussy cut into there, cut out um, one of the butterflies. Just goes to show you can mix and match the butterflies that we've got within our template uh, with any other butterfly designs that you've got in your stash. And we're going to add this into the centre of that butterfly just to finish it off that little bit more. So shaping our wings and adding some foam tape onto the back for a bit of lift. And just to finish that off, to add a little bit more design into the corners. I've cut two more um, of these butterflies. These are slightly smaller ones. These are actually from that 12 by, not the 12 by 12, they're from the six by six pad. Um, whereas the larger one was from the larger format 12 by 12 pad. Um, we've used the smaller six by six pad for these two butterflies that we're gonna add on the bottom left. Um, I think bottom right and top left, just for a little bit of balance. Um, and just to finish off those two corners and get drawing the eye into the centre of this design. So I think we'll have one onto there and let's have another one on that top corner just for a little bit of balance and that's going to complete our butterfly box. But you saw, I know I had everything cut out from um, to start with, but you saw how easy it was to actually put together. You've got a lovely finished design on the front, but as we open it up, we've got that lovely design in the centre. It just gives you that little bit of interest. It's one of those you look at to start with and you're not quite sure how it's been put together you guys saw then it's really simple and don't forget you do get all your instructions included as well so really easy to follow really really pretty aren't they and come together uh, so easily as well which i think is absolutely awesome uh let me uh just share again then with you exactly what you are getting in here so this one here uh being your butterfly box so you've got two sets of templates there for the butterfly box uh, we also then have the tulip box here and then what we've got uh, is our 3D bow card. So you've got uh, three different sets of templates 
uh, in there to take you through that. All of those, 23.97 or 30.95 is your price on those. We're gonna move on, and we're gonna have a little look at something a bit out of the ordinary, really. These are so popular uh, when we launch them. It's a country village. I'll give you the details of the complete collection first, and I'm gonna take you through the individual ones that you've got, because it's up to you which of these are items you'd like to go for. Obviously, they work beautifully all together, or what you can choose to do uh, is pick and choose them. Um, but really, really great uh, selection here of templates and also dyes that enable it. Mean, it's almost kind of borderline model making, really, isn't it? If you're going for the big collection, you will get the stamps included too. Um, the deal is out of this world. It really is. £142 uh, down to £114 is off today. Makes it £28 if you're across the pond, $166 is what you should be looking at, $33 today. And you can go and pick and choose on the individuals if you want to. So let me give you the details for the smaller collections first. This is the Manor House. So what you get in here is you are going to receive the uh, dies there, as you can see, and you will get the um, template too. And that is the Manor House there that you have. That is what your Manor House will give you. Then you've also got the Cozy Cottage, which is this one just here. You're going to get all of those dies to enable you to make that. And then what you will also get is you'll get the template in there as well. That one there is your Cozy Cottage. That is what that is going to make for you, which is great. So you can see how that comes together. Next one here, this one is the Townhouse that you are looking at there. And that is going to come with this stencil, of course, to make the Townhouse. And that is exactly what it's going to make for you. Then we also have the thatched cottage, which is this one here. This comes with this style template, and that is your thatched cottage. That is what you're going to be able to create with that one. And we also then have your village church, uh, as you can see there. And the village church is going to create that for you. As you see, uh, that, this one here shows you how they all work together. That one there is the village church and the mm, town and the thatch cottage uh, together there, as you can see, to make something a little bit more out of the ordinary. It's completely up to you how you want to get a hold of them. Excellent value, uh, however you look at it, which is fabulous. So uh, remember, if you're going for the whole thing together, you'll get the textures included too. So it's all your stamps in there to create the, uh, the wood panelling, the brickwork, all the different bits that you should need, including that clock tower as well right that is that uh, let's move on and have a little look at something to give you a sneak peek of earlier is these just here now these are excellent because they work so well as a concept all together or you can use them uh, apart i'll show you the templates first actually because the templates these actually are now label you to make a really nice selection of almost stationary, really. Uh, I'm sure Lily will take us through a few of the sort of different ways of using, using these in a moment. But things like your little memory books or box files, if you want to use these to make those, you absolutely can. So you get three templates in the accessories. You also get the flip book dies, and then you'll get the decorative accessory dies in there as well. Uh, 37.97 is what you should be looking at. Uh, this is coming down to 30 pounds, 37. Uh, and then this one here is 35.08 uh, is what you're looking at in the US. 28.06 is what you are looking at there with this one. But we're going to move on again and we're going to have a look at this one here, the Enchanted Storybook, uh, which is this one here. Now this is great. Again, makes a really lovely solid concept. So you've got this one just here. This is your main storybook die. Use it on its own or use it with the actual draw system that you've got, which is this one here. So that's going to make for you that little draw that slots underneath. So this one here is 1874 or 2246, if you want to get your hands on that one. Lots of you chatting away with us in the comments. Uh, Rene, Rene says, my father-in-law needs that shirt, Joe. I forgot that this was a brand of beer in the US. Is it like a sort of highbrow, you know, hipster brand of beer? Or is it the sort of thing, you know, your uncle drinks down the pub with his mates? That's what we need to know. We need to find out. I'd love to know. Um, Rene says she needs it for her father-in-law. So that, you know, kind of... Uh, uh, implies maybe we've got the answer to the question there. Uh, Lisa's in Minnesota, she's saying hi. Mary's is such a lovely butterfly box. Marsha loving that box too there as well. 
uh, Michelle not saying um, she's treated herself to quite a lot of stuff on Cutler on Thursday. She's really excited to see the stuff that Sarah has coming up this week. Yeah, and myself and Sarah uh, will be here. It's myself, I do believe. I'm just going to double check to make sure it hasn't changed before I tell you this. Uh, it's not my... Oh, is it myself and Sarah? I don't know. Who do you think, uh, in the gallery, who do you think is doing Wake Up Call tomorrow on your... Me... And Sarah, I thought it was. So I've got me and Sarah. I've also got me and Jan uh, in my diary as well. It's me and Sarah uh, tomorrow uh, here for Wake Up Call, looking ahead, giving you the highlights of a very, very special week. And then me and Sarah here for a very special show tomorrow evening as well, 6 p.m. in the UK, 1 o'clock on the East Coast, for a three-hour show, which will be really, really exciting. So make sure uh, you come and join the pair of us for that uh, tomorrow. And Jan will be joining us in the middle of the day as well. Jan is here tomorrow in the middle of the day with... Uh, oh, Monday Makers is going to be in the afternoon slot tomorrow. So just mixing up uh, a little bit for you, which is always uh, excited. Um, oh, good Lord, no, lol. Joe, it's more like drink it out of the can in a brown paper bag style of beer. There you are, going for the irony uh, there, clearly. I saw it on a fashion website in the UK and I had absolutely no idea what it was and I needed a shirt for a US warehouse clearance photo shoot, so that was how uh, it came about. But now I'm quite taken with it. I actually, I actually wear it at home quite a lot out and about, so goodness knows what people think. I'll just not wear it if I go on holiday uh, to the States. Anyway, let's go back over to lovely Lee. She's got um, lots more to share with us. This next one's really cool, isn't it? Again, another one you could theme in so many different ways. Absolutely, and you can be using it like we're going to be using it here with the um, boxes, so you create that draw system. But of course, you can be using the dies independently, not using the box at all. So lots and lots of different options with this one. Completely up to you, but absolutely fabulous die set. And of course, we get our templates in there too. So our templates, in order to create this um, box and draw um, sort of thing going off at the bottom of this card, what we need to do is we need to draw around this particular template once and cut it out and I've used craft card for this particular design. So I've drawn that round and um, we've added in our score lines and that's all good to go. So we're gonna leave that to one side for just a minute. And then our other piece that we've got um, within the set of templates is this particular piece. And all we're gonna do is gonna take some craft card and I always find it easy when we've got something like this with um, a straight edge, line up one corner like so and then just draw around the other two sides. J don't pop it in the middle of your card stock because then you're gonna have to draw around um, all four sides. Um, if you just pop it into the corner and line it up nicely, you'll only have to draw around those two sides and it'll just be a little bit easier. You can of course be using your guillotine so you could mark down onto here exactly where you need to cut and then instead of using your scissors, uh, you could be using your guillotine or paper trimmer if you find that easier. But with it being straight lines, nice long pair of scissors, sharp pair of scissors, um, our crafter's companion six inch or nine inch will be perfect for that and just chop around the edges. And all we need to do is similar to some of our other templates that we've already used on today's show, is we've got those little notches on there and all we need to do is we need to take our scoring tool and our scoreboard and just pop in um, those little score lines. So lining it up top and bottom, then take our scoring tool. I'm just using my big score. Um, you don't it need to be an A3 scoreboard for this particular design. Uh, an A4 scoreboard will work perfectly as well. But just pop your scores in like so. And you will need two of this particular piece. So the first piece that we cut using our template will only need the one. But for this particular one, we actually need two of the same piece. And just reinforcing our score lines. So we've got those two pieces onto there like so. Then all we're going to do is in order to build this, we sort of, um, this is our outer casing, so those pieces will join together. We'll pop that together in just a moment. And then we've got our drawer, which will go in the inside. So we're gonna start by building our drawer, but first of all, we're gonna pop a mat and layer onto that front piece. So using some of our papers from that Knitwit Home Body Collection that we've got on today's show, is we've cut one mat and layer uh, and I've just measured these and chopped them down using my guillotine. Um, so we'll have one mat and layer for the front of our drawer just to finish it off. And I found the um, greens within this collection work really nicely with um, the craft card. Um, just something a little bit different. 
So one is going to go onto that, and then what we're going to do is we're going to build um, our drawer. So this is the inner drawer part um, of our little box drawer system. So like we're building any sort of box, just imagine this is almost like a box base, and we'll pop our adhesive onto our four tabs, and that just be a case of folding those up like so. And again, for this particular one, I'm using my um, tape runner just for speed, but again, your um, red liner tape will work perfectly as well. Um, tacky glue you can use, but you will need something like some pegs uh, or a bulldog clip just um, to hold that into position while the glue grabs. So that is our inner drawer. And then we bring back in our other two pieces. And on the top one, we're gonna pop a matting layer. Obviously we don't need to um, decorate the base. Um, so we just need one of these pieces that we're gonna pop onto the top of this outer drawer casing. So some tape runner onto there, then just line that up onto that piece, making sure it's nice and level. And then we've got two smaller pieces that can be our mats and layers for this outer part. So one's gonna go onto this piece and then the other one will go onto um, our other piece that's identical um, to this one. So the same score lines, the same template, um, just ever so slightly different in that this is going to be the base. So we've not got our mat and layer onto the base, um, but we're still going to have our mats and layers onto the sides. You could, of course, be adding mats and layers onto the sides of your drawer piece, but when the drawer shut, you won't actually see those mats and layers. So we've just added one onto the center. But if you do want to fully decorate that up, uh, then absolutely, by all means, go ahead and do so. Bring out all your lovely pattern papers, all your different colored card stocks, and just have a real play uh, with different colors and finishes. So what we need to do is we need to line up that smaller tab with um, one of the larger tabs. So sticking that together like so, and then it's the same for the other side, lining up the smaller, um, narrower um, piece that's got the score line on the side. Is my tape runner run out or not? Let's have a look. I guess these would make these would work so well for so many different occasions, wouldn't they? You know, whether it's um, birthdays or, or maybe you know someone you know is having a baby, it could be a scan picture in there, some little mementos in them too. I think the fact that you've got a drawer to keep stuff in and an area to decorate, Lily, makes them really quite unique. Mm, absolutely, and just mixing up your pattern papers, mixing up your colours, your embellishments can be perfect for any occasion. They could be festive as well. Get um, all your glitters and all your Christmas papers on there. Got some fabulous 12 by 12 pads coming up tonight on uh, Second Chance Sunday that are Christmas themed or winter themed um, rather. So just mixing up all your pattern papers is going to give you a totally different result every single time. And once we've built that, it's just a case of slotting that into the centre like so. And that is our draw part. But what we're going to do next is we're going to, and that's upside down, so all we're going to do is just going to slide that. I was thinking, where's my pattern paper gone? It's because it's upside down. So if we slot that together like so, we've got our design Brilliant. on the top, on the front and on the two sides. But now we're going to go back to the dies within the collection. And all I'm doing is I'm taking that largest die, that one with a lovely decorative edge to it, and I'm just going to cut that out of some of our craft card. I'm going to create our own card base using these fabulous dies. So they're great for embellishment, great for mats and layers, and you get lots of the different sizes included as well within um, this set of dies. You get about you get about five different layers. So you get the outer one that we're cutting now, which has got that lovely sort of vine detail at the edges, and you've got the inner ones, which give you almost like a ripped effect, a torn effect to those pages. So those all could be car blanks on their own. They could be mats and layers for larger cars. It could be gift tags. You could be using them on scrapbook pages. You could be creating apertures, frames. Lots and lots of you can do with them, with them basically being um, mat and layer dies, if you like. Uh, Marcella's got a question. She says, Ooh, yeah. uh, what weight of craft card stock did you use for the drawers? Ooh, so this is our Just one that we've got in. on the website. Okay, duck. Oh, I, I always, think it's three, 300. I think it's 300. I think, I always struggle to remember this. I know our multi-purpose is 300. I think our matte black's about 280, but I think your craft is 300. Yeah, so I was going to say 300 or 310. I don't know why no, that came defi to No, definitely not 310, I don't think. I think it is 300. But something, you want something that's over 250 because you need it to have a nice bit of strength behind it. Uh, but something like this craft card at 300 is absolutely perfect for something like this. Ooh. Crafts is 280, there we go. Ooh, there we go. So all we've done, so we've got that one piece that's cut out fully. 
Then we've folded a piece of our craft card in half. We just hang the die over the top slightly, um, over that fold so it doesn't cut out completely, and that gives us our card base. Now, with it being such a detailed die, it might not cut through fully on your lower layer. I'm not concerned about this. It looks, it gives us that lovely design, but it's not cut through to the back layer. If you do want that to cut all the way through, add something like your metal shimming, uh, and then you'll get that complete cut. But we've got the complete cut on the top, and that just that decorative design in the bottom, which I think looks really quite nice. Um, so I'm not too fussed the fact that we've not got that cut out detail in there. And then we've just scored in half again on that top piece. And in order to make this into an easel card, we just need to pop some um, tape runner or, or any glue or adhesive of choice, something nice and strong onto that lower piece. Always easier to put your adhesive onto this piece rather than this one, because you know exactly uh, how far up and exactly where you could need to pop your adhesive uh, onto that piece. And then just line those two up. With it being cut by a die, you know it's going to be perfect in terms of lining it up. And that gives you the start of your easel card like so. And then we're bringing in some of our mats and layers. So these are the two uh, next mats and layers down uh, from that die set. So I'm not having to go and look in other sets within my collection, trying to find other mat and layer dies. They're all included within this one die set. You've got that lovely torn edge effect. Our um, larger one, we have used some of our Knitwit A4 home body uh, cardstock, that lovely pearl card. And then our top one, We've actually used our pattern paper, again, from that Knitwit Home Body 12x12. 12 12. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scoreboard and I'm just going to pop a score line down the middle of this piece just to make it look a little bit more realistic, like a real, um, like a real page of the book, really. And then what we're going to do is just going to fold that in half. It's easier to do once you've um, actually stuck these two layers together rather than trying to do it on one and then the other, then stick them together and trying to line them all up it's a lot easier to stick them together first and then just add in a little bit of shape, just using our hands uh, onto the centre of there to give us that, um, that sort of realistic feel to our book pages. And then we're going to add some uh, 3D foam just to the centre and then we're going to stick that to the top of our card base to start decorating uh, our lovely book card. And of course this could be uh, a card shape on its own. We don't have to be using it with the drawers that we created earlier, uh, but we are going to stick it all together in a moment and that will give us that lovely uh, finishing effect of the card and the drawer. So if you find that for your bottom layer it's overhanging a little bit and catching at the top, just trim that down either using a pair of scissors or a guillotine or trimmer. And then we're going to have this as our decoration onto that lower piece just to keep the top flowing uh, with the base of the card. And if we line that up nice and central, that gives us our design onto there like so. Then I think we're going to add this to our box now, and I'll try and make sure I get it the right way around this time. And I find it easier to add our adhesive onto this piece. With this piece being built already and being 3D, it's a little bit more difficult to get your adhesive onto that particular piece. So add some of our tape runner onto our card itself, just like so. And then all we're going to do, line this up so it's nice and central. And making sure it's the right way around. Line I'm that guessing up. you, I mean, you look at this and you think about making them quite cutesy and stuff, don't you? Mm. I mean, you could actually theme this up in any way you want. You know, well, yeah. if you had someone in the family's in the Wizarding films, yes, you know, you could make a great definitely. one of those, couldn't it? Could be a little spell book or something like that. I think there's so many different playful ways you could think to theme these. Yeah, absolutely. It could be quite magical and mystical, if you like. You could be including photos. So it could be one of those lovely photo cards um, with some lovely memories on there. Again, like I said, it could be Christmas. Whatever you choose to embellish it with uh, is completely up to you and it's going to change that design every single time. They don't have to be pretty or romantic. They could be grungy. They could be magical and mystical. It could be festive. Completely up to you. But adding our stopper onto the centre of there, I think I'm going to add a, actually another layer of foam onto there just to get that standing proud a little bit more. And the embellishments I'm using are from that Knitwit Home Body, and that's the 12 by 12 die cut topper pad, um, which you will find on the website. Obviously, it works fabulously with the papers that we've got within the collection that we've got on today's show. And again, we've taken another of those toppers from that die cut pad, matted and layered it onto some of that same green pearl card. So we've got the same mats and layers on the base and the top of um, our easel card so that everything works together nicely. Drawers just popped out like so, and then add that onto that right hand side. And then a few more embellishments. I'm going to pop this little die cut on that top 
left hand side almost like it's hanging down so some more foam tape onto the back of there I do like my foam tape for a little bit of dimension it does just make um, your toppers and your embellishments stand proud from your card base uh, and makes them really stand out and a little bow to the center of there just to finish that off and then i'm thinking i'm going to add one of our keys onto that bottom uh, left hand side so some more foam tape onto the back of here and how perfect would this be as a the new home card and gift all in one so you could be popping some little bits and pieces that'd be perfect uh, for anyone who's just moved into a new home be popping those in our drawer just to uh, as a little gift so it's not a massive gift but it looks absolutely fabulous when you've got your uh, card and your gift all in one just make something a little bit more special like I say these are proper keepsake items uh, that people are going to want to save for years to come but adding that button onto there just to finish it off finishes off your project really really nicely but you've got the card and the drawer at the bottom easy to create using these fabulous dies and stencils but just have a play around with all your different stuff that you've got in your stash and you can create something really quite special absolutely awesome aren't they and and really great value for money when you think about what a strong concept it creates for you uh i don't think it's a large amount of money to ask whatsoever mm. it's not a big investment when you think about how many of these you can make the different ways in which you could uh, style these i think it's a really really fantastic way to go so remember you're getting in here you're going to get the template and then you're also going to receive as well you're going to receive the dies too and lots of different uh, elements within here as well which is brilliant 1874 or 2246 brilliant uh, so do grab a hold of those a great deal for you under 15 pounds uh, as a platinum member to get a hold of that which is sensational value for money it really is something else i want to share with you is these um, and it is from our nitwits collection uh, what you've got here really lovely that we're able to bring you these two together actually because you've got the luxury cardstock firstly in this one here and then what you've got is your 12 by 12 paper pad or design papers as we sometimes call them in here all double-sided for you which is excellent beautiful beautiful designs lots of lovely floral elements within there which is gorgeous um, just absolutely stunning really is lovely love all those sort of gentle blues and pinks um, and greens that are in there 24.99 or 30.99 if you want to get hold of those again under 20 pounds or 25 dollars if you are a platinum member a lot of you loving that last demonstration. Uh, Sarah Brown says, loving the demos today. Thanks, Lily, for sharing all of your ideas with us. Uh, Jill says, beautiful. And Shanna says, hi, this is lovely, Lily. I may have to make one for a bridal shower I've got coming up real soon. What a really wonderful idea that is. Right, we're going to go straight back to Lily. We're going to have another demonstration. Let me just share with you what we're going to be taking a look at is these here, the 3D templates. We've already seen Lily creating from the other two. So Lily's already created the butterfly, which is this one uh, just here that you've seen. Uh, Lily's also going to create something from this, which is the tulip. And remember, you're also getting the templates for the bows in there too, 23.97 or 30.95. Uh, is your, place, uh, your price on those. Right, getting as much inspiration as you can, Lily, right until the very end uh, Absolutely. today. Absolutely. Yes, I'm squeezing every last minute out. We might not get to finish this, but we will show you a finished example uh, if we don't quite uh, get through there. But I'd like to talk you through exactly how you can put, pop together this fabulous tulip box. So again, we've got all of our templates included and the same sort of system, number, uh, lettering system even. I do know the difference between numbers and letters, honestly, <laughs> even at this time of the day. Um, um, but you get the right amount um, for how many you're going to need to cut out. So this is actually a box. So we start off with template A and this is our actual box base. So all you need to do is draw around your template onto your cardstock of choice. Um, so for this particular one, we're using some of our Centura Pearl Fresh White. Uh, we've drawn around it, we've added our score lines in and then we're adding some tape. So what we need to do with this particular one any place where it's a tab which doesn't have a curved edge so when it's squared off like these four here is where we need our tape so add our tape onto there and i'm breaking my own rules and i'm adding all the tape on at once you know normally i would be um, using my red liner tape and um, peeling off the back in one piece at a time but just for speed we're going for it on this sunday afternoon uh, end of a master class we're going for it so see how we get on and then we're going to fold these two into here like so so remember don't add any of your adhesive onto your uh, curved edge tabs and um, because those 
we need to keep those uh, without adhesive so our box opens. So then we've folded our box together and of course you could be using this as a standalone box without the tulip part. You don't have to be adding that on. You could be adding your own decorations but just as Such a standalone. Such a quick and simple box so that is, easy, isn't it? honestly, isn't it? But it just slots together absolutely perfectly light. So if you need to trim a little bit more off the edges there, if that's catching ever so slightly, then just go in with a pair of scissors and just trim those down to give you a slightly neater finish. Uh, but again, it, with anything like this, it's just having a play, having a play around um, and just making things work for you. But just enjoying playing. I think templates are something you just sit down, perhaps on a Sunday afternoon like today, and just enjoy the process of putting uh, all the pieces together and creating something absolutely wonderful. So that's our box. Um, all ready and good to go. Then we're going to bring in some of the other pieces. So similar to our bow, we have sort of our base layer and our mats and layers. So we need to cut out four of C. So I've got my base layer using some of our, I'm trying to think, this is from the testing me now. I want to say it's, it's Dancing Dragonfly A4 Pearl Card. So that's where our lovely purple is from. And then we've used our Dancing Dragonfly again, but with the 12 by 12 inch papers. And we got, get piece D and piece F. And all we do, it's just a case, just like you would mat and lay with a normal card. I bet um, you could make these up as toppers and make a really oh, lovely um, card out of these. Yeah, but I remember when uh, Jan launched these actually on launch day, we had one of our lovely viewers uh, emailing in and saying um, these would be fabulous for a plique, perhaps cutting them out of felt uh, and using them as a plique design. So think of them uh, in different ways rather than just as your, um, as your 3D box. So we layer those together and that gives us that and we do this four more times. And then we bring in our other piece, which is piece B, and the same sort of thing. We have H, G and I, which are our three little mats and layers that go at the top. We can look at the instructions and they'll tell us a certain sort of order um, to stick them down, but it's totally up to you um, which one you pop on first and um, which one you layer up last. Um, just give you a slightly different effect, but the instructions as ever will take you through step by step. And I'm just adding some tacky glue onto the back of here to give us a little bit of time to maneuver this into place. But with it being cut out with our templates, we know that we're going to get that perfect positioning every single time onto there. Uh, everything's already been measured for us. All it is is a case of just drawing around those templates um, to create all our different pieces. So draw around. I always use a pencil. Um, you can always rub it out, but I always draw in the reverse. So it means then um, that we don't actually need to rub those pencil lines out. So draw around them, cut them out, and then we start to layer them up like so. So that's one all layered up. We're going to do another four uh, like that. And again, we've got all the correct number of template pieces included in the collection. And then what it's, is a case of uh, bringing these two pieces together that we've just layered up and just sticking those together. So nice and simple to do. You can see that tulip design is already starting to really take shape. My tape runner, I don't know what I've done. To, oh, I'm at the end of it. Ooh. They remind me of a, there's some sort of sort of Asian style flower they lotus. remind me of. Do you want it is a lotus, yes, I think that's yes. what it is. There's a building in Singapore. I'm going to have to Google it, Lee, otherwise, you know, I'll be up all night tonight and then oh, I'll, in the middle of the night I'll jump out of bed <laughs> working out what it is. But of course, if you mix up your colours, it can be any flower you like, really. I'm, I'm seeing a lotus flower now. I'm thinking, uh, cut it in your, perhaps your pinks, um, lovely pattern papers. I think some of the... Um, the Dancing Dragonfly papers have got some lovely uh, water lily type designs, so that would work quite nicely with this as well. Uh, it's, the, uh, it's the Art and Science Museum in Singapore. Ooh, I'll have to look uh, into it. Referred to, the architect says it's, uh, it's designed referred to as the welcoming hand of Singapore. Oh, there you are. Nice. See, you get a history lesson as well. Here. Uh, if you want to go and visit, it's number six, the Bay, Bayfront Avenue, Singapore. There you are. I'll put it on the list. <laughs> But what we're doing now is we're bringing in some of these little pieces. These are piece J and we've got to cut four of those. We have to add a little score line down the middle of these as well. And all we're going to do is we're going to add some red liner tape um, to each side. And then we take one of these pieces at a time and all we do is we add these onto the back like so. So the um, fold is flush with the bottom of our tulip and we do that on all four pieces. So using red liner tape, again it could be your tape runner, uh, I've just popped this onto the back ready to save us a little bit of time um, and obviously it 
gives going to give us that lovely strong bond onto there. So line up that um, fold line with the bottom of the tulip. I keep wanting to call it a lotus now, it's all I can see. <laughs> but of course, I think you get tulips in lots of different colours. I mean, you probably don't get them quite patterned like what we've got here, but with it being uh, your own creation, you can do whatever colour um, you prefer. You could even be using perhaps some of your embossing folders on those, um, those panels. So we're going to bring in our box. We know that's our front. And then all we do is we line these up and we start to stick these onto here. And these little tabs, piece J, is what connects our um, tulip itself to the top of the box. So line that up so it's about central. That um, fold line is flush with the edge of the top of our box. And then we go in and we do exactly the same with our next piece. So just making sure uh, that is nice and level with we, that. We uh, like so. might have to take a pause to get that Ooh. card of the show vote Ooh, in. Oh, yes. Do I want to go for it now? Mm, should we do it now? Oh, I reckon mm. we're going to go for it. Oh, so, Susie, I, it's just not a, I mean, Susie, I said let's do it now, but Jamie's overruled Jamie's me, Susie. Overruled. So you're going to have to go to him. Susie's, uh, oh, you know, Susie's, I mean, she's spitting feathers in the comments. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, I ain't dear. joking. We'll get it in. Mm -hmm. Right, so we've got all our pieces onto there, but obviously it's looking a little bit strange now. We need to sort of connect it together. So all we're going to do is we're going to take some red liner tape uh, and we're going to add this into the corners of each of the four uh, tulips. So this might take a moment to um, peel the backing off, so we might need to get the vote off. Um, but we've got a piece in each of these four edges on all of the, each of the two edges on all of the four tulips rather. And this is going to be what sticks the four tulips together and sort of makes them into one complete piece on the top of our box. So peeling the red liner tape off, use my three mil of course for this, uh, with it being quite a fiddly little piece. You do want your smaller red liner tape and you will find all your different lengths uh, on the shop the day page. Apparently there's a tulip called uh, Queen of the Night that is dark purple. Oh, that sounds this fabulous. Could be. I almost bought a, check this, but I almost bought a purple suit yesterday for a oh, wedding next grief. week. And yeah, I went on and I was like, gosh, it's very on brand this. It was, it's quite of a light purple, but how funny would that have been? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you, Ben Most? <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, you know what? There's a few suits that I've worn for photo shoots over the last year or so. I could oh, pick one of those out and wear one of those for the wedding. Blimey, yeah. There's been a few, hasn't there? <laughs> been a there's, few a pink, there's a very, ones. very, very bold pink one in there, apparently. Oh, yes. Yeah, I do remember that one. Yes. But um, you can match your tulip box if, if you wish, you know. Coordinate your craft with your, with your suit. Hmm. Um, but we've stuck all four of those together. You can see our box is starting to take shape. I'm trying to work out which is the front. That's the front. And then what we've done is we've taken piece F, which is our leaf. And then we've cut four of those out. You need two which are sort of facing um, towards the left and two which are facing towards the right. And every single time I make this box, I forget. <laughs> and I cut four out which are absolutely identical. Uh, and then I have to go and cut another two out and save two for the other project. Shaping that top bit, a little bit of adhesive on that bottom section. Then what you're going to do is you're going to line that up one side at a time and then just bend that round and just tease it into position. Oh, that's really cool how that works. They look fab, don't they? But it's much easier if you use a thinner weight uh, paper. I'd say definitely a paper for this particular piece. Um, so what we're going to do is we might want to bring in the vote if... It's going to be a we'll very, let's... very fast vote. Going to be Susie, a Susie, I hope you've got your abacus ready, is all I'll say. We're just going to stick this leaf on and then we will do the vote and then we'll pop the other two leaves on in just a moment. So those are our front two and then we're going to go back right to the start Brilliant. of the show. Brilliant. Let's go for like the vote. years ago, but we create this lovely bow card to start with. Look how dramatic that is with the black and the sunflower pad. That's demo number one. Demo number two, think a little bit more dem demure if you like and a little bit lighter. We've got our favour boxes. That is demo number two with our little flowers onto that. Demo number three is this butterfly box, nice and vintage with our vintage butterflies. Demo number three for you there. Demo number four is this um, enchanted storybook that we've just created with our drawer at the bottom. And demo number five is half done. It will be done in a moment. Just imagine there's two more leaves and a couple of embellishments and that is your demo number five. Brilliant. You've got 30 seconds to get your votes in. So go, 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 go now. Uh, did you say you've still got something to, you've got yes. a few bits to finish on there? So maybe. we're doing exactly the same with our other two leaf pieces. This is speed crafting if ever we knew it. But it's much easier if you shape first, you can use a tool. I know I think um, Jan uses a bone folder for this. 
uh, she finds it easier to add that shape. So shape that top maybe two thirds. And then on the bottom section, we've got two pieces of red line tape, one on the left and one on the right. And then all we do is we line that up in the middle. We stick one side. Once we're happy with that, we bend it round, just tease it into position. That's why it's much easier if you are using your thinner weight papers rather than your cardstock. Uh, it just allows you to really sculpt those shapes. If you were using a thick cardstock, uh, it would be potentially be sort of bending and cracking. It wouldn't give you as nice a finished result. Then we'll add that onto there. I'm trying to find the front of my box. So I think it's that side. And then all we're going to do in order to finish it off is we'd probably add a couple of die cuts onto there. Those are just from our Dancing Dragonflies collection. But that is how easy and how quick you can create your tulip boxes. But so much fun to pop together. <laughs> Really cool, aren't they? And I think a lot of people were saying in the comments, Lee, they felt that maybe the tulip was a bit challenging to put together. I think you've absolutely dispelled that. Uh, Shalit says, Lily, you make the tulip look so easy. I guess after you get all the bits together, um, it was easy. I felt a bit overwhelmed doing the first one. Um, yes, I guess it's just a case of putting them together, isn't it? Having all mm -hmm. those bits cut out and then assembling the individual elements and then putting the whole thing together. I think you've shown everyone just how simple that is. I know a lot of people say they're going to be giving that a go for the first time. Let me show you what you're going to get included in this collection. Then you get the two templates for the butterfly. You've seen all three of these made as well, which is lovely in this show. You've again got the tulip box in there too. And then also the bow, which is, oh, hello, these ones are just here. And from the Twin Cities says, what is the best? cardstock to use for these uh, especially for the bow the bow you want to think a little bit thinner so something about 250 and then if your top layer is about 180 but so sort of go for under 300 for both layers because don't forget you're adding the two layers together so around 250 or under but if you do go thinner still will be absolutely fine Brilliant. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Uh, it's really close between one and three. We'll have the uh, vote in just a moment. Don't forget to come and join myself and Lily. We're going to close out your week as well, which feels weird, Lily, because it's my first, my first day in today. Oh. Yet it's the last day of the week. It's a very weird. sort of strange mix. Uh, I'm with you until the end of Tuesday this week. Um, so make sure you come and join myself and Lily for that. Lots in that show. Uh, we've got brilliant Christmas sentiments for Ooh, you. Yes. We're going to have another look at the Academy of Colour um, as well, which was uh, really cool so we'll see that again uh, later oh, the winter solstice paper pads I forgot about oh, these of course they yes. launched didn't they earlier in the week loads of you um, absolutely loving those uh, we also of course uh, have flower dyes and stamping uh, selections all sorts of wonderful things by one vote it's demo number one Lily Ooh. demo number one our 3D bow card and we did just finish off our box there so Way, that's lovely. All. That's demo number five, but demo number one is a winner. Absolutely beautiful. Really, really love that. Um, right, make sure you join myself and Lily. We will see you back here in a couple of hours' time. So as we go and have a natter and a catch-up and get some dinner. Oh, maybe watch a bit of the football as Ooh, well. Right, yeah. we'll see you back here in two hours' time. Bye.